words of joy and hope 21st sunday in ordinary time year b gospel according to saint john chapter 6 verses 60 to 69 commentary of father fernando armelini a good sunday to all we often hear repeated bitter considerations about the present situation of our church the time is undoubtedly difficult the data are discouraging many are leaving some are disappointed in their expectations others are attracted by new life prospects or seduced by the allure of the worldliness and secularization we also hear of the danger of schisms of heretical positions what is happening in our church how should we move in this moment of crisis many suggest that it is necessary to adapt to the new times in order not to remain anchored in the conceptions of the past and this may be true but for some it means that it is necessary to adapt the gospel to the reality of this world certain principles certain values preached in the past are no longer in fashion today so we have to resign ourselves to the reality of the situation otherwise we will be branded as medieval retrogrades this is one answer others instead denounce the dangers of syncretism with the world with other religions and put a guard on the dangers of the dominant culture the danger of compromising with the logic of this world that has nothing to do with the logic of the gospel today's gospel passage provides us with a precious light to help us read the ecclesial moment we are living in the last few sundays we have listened to and reflected on the discourse pronounced by jesus in capernaum let us remember that the jews challenged him and today at the conclusion of this discourse the evangelist records the perplexity and bewilderment even among the disciples in capernaum something very similar to what we are living today has happened let us listen many of his disciples who were listening said this saying is hard who can accept it Up to this point of his discourse Jesus interlocutors were the multitudes and the Jews who from the beginning refused to accept him they could not accept that he was presenting himself as the incarnation of the wisdom of God now the interlocutors change the disciples enter the scene the ones who have given him their adhesion they have believed in him what happens now to the disciples they realize that there has been a misunderstanding they gave their support to jesus thinking that they would receive from him honors glory riches success and now they do not receive these things but they are invited to give their lives not to be served but to become servants themselves and this was not what they had in mind they had other dreams at this point they draw very bitter conclusion they say this word is hard who can listen to it any any more what is this hard word the word of jesus had been hard from the beginning for the multitudes for the jews who had immediately rejected the affirmation that jesus was the successful man the perfect man 
the disciples now experience the harshness of his word when he said that it was necessary to assimilate his flesh the flesh is not the muscles but his person it is the wisdom of god who became man in a carpenter assumed all the frailties of our human condition and when they realize this they say it is hard proposition scleros in greek it is like when someone suddenly bumps into something they didn't expect and get gets hurt he was distracted and now wakes up because he was bumped into something hard something similar happens to the disciples jesus's discourse to them had been soft and gentle until that moment when they were questioned and invited to make a choice about what they wanted to do with their lives and when jesus said it was necessary to assimilate his person his flesh they felt the blow and understood what it meant to follow him the multitude had followed him to make him king they had seen him do wonders and thought that he would do everything would create the new world by himself they had not understood that he had given the signs of this new world to be built by them trusting in his word the multitudes had been mistaken they had followed him thinking that they had at their disposal one who would have solved with miracles the concrete problems of their lives the disciples in their turn had continued to cultivate their dreams in short they expected favors for the perishing life and now they understand and many disciples turn away it is too hard this request that he makes the disciples have understood that to eat his flesh means to decide to join their life to his and when this is understood the conclusion can only be the one reached by jesus's interlocutors in cover now let us try to make a small verification from our own lives of what happened to the disciples in cover now those disciples are us the first question approaching christ have we experienced the hardness of what he asks of us have we felt the hardness of the this blow this pain because we have crashed against something hard if we think that adhering to jesus means some prayer some good deed some signs of the cross a pilgrimage these are all good things but it is something soft if we stop at these practices we have not yet crashed against the proposal of the gospel the crisis becomes inevitable when we understand what his beatitudes mean then some realize that perhaps they have cultivated some wrong expectations let us ask ourselves what do we feel when we approach the eucharistic banquet is it a sweet soft experience an intimate experience or is it a hard experience if it is soft intimate we have not understood look at that bread that is christ what does that bread that is him say to you he says to you i have become bread i have given all of myself i have offered myself to you as food for life i have made myself a servant then do you want to join your life to mine do you also want to give your life to your brother or sister even if he or she is someone who has hurt you but who now needs you 
Are you willing to give your life for them? If you understand this, you realize that the decision you are going to make is a hard one. If you feel the pain of having come across with this request, then you understood what the Eucharist is. If you do not feel this hardness, then you approach the Eucharist without fruit. Then there is another check that many Christians have yet to make. They are the ones that look like to the multitudes of Capernaum, those who live in equivocation. They expect from Jesus what he never promised and will not give. They come to Jesus because they think that from him they will receive some advantages in life. He will save them from difficulties of life, which many times is difficult in this world because there are sicknesses, pains, trials. As they pray to Jesus, they think they will be privileged. When they understand that Jesus teaches us not to receive but to give, to become poor, to be left with nothing because we give everything out of love, then when Christians collide with this request, they realize that it is hard. If we haven't experienced the pain of having crashed with the gospel request, we continue to live in ambiguity. Let us now listen to how Jesus lived this moment of crisis of the disciples. Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are Spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. There was the rejection, the stiff and determined opposition on the part of the multitudes and the Jews. And Jesus realizes that even his disciples deny him. They oppose his proposal. The same verb, gong huze, translated as a murmur, is used. No. They reject Jesus' proposal. And Jesus is not surprised. He knows that this is the difficulty of accepting to become like him the gift of himself, to sacrifice oneself for others, even for one's enemies. Humanly, it is a failure. It is difficult to accept this proposal. Here is the scandal, the stumbling block of which today's gospel speaks. The disciples risk making a mistake in their way of following Jesus. They had not followed him to give life, but to receive. They expected something else from him, and Jesus is not surprised. They have experienced, as we have, that it is difficult always to obey the Spirit. Jesus did not obey orders from above. He obeyed his identity as the Son of God. This identity is the life of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that has been given to us, and it is difficult to always listen to God to the son or daughter of who is in us, who continually asks you to love, it is difficult. And Jesus knows it. The letter to the Hebrew says that it is precisely because he also was tested and suffered personally. For this reason, he can come to the aid of those who must undergo the same trials. Also in chapter 4 of the letter to the Hebrews, 
It says that Jesus is not someone who does not know how to sympathize with our frailties because he was tested in everything as we are. The only difference is that he always followed the Spirit while we often make mistakes. Instead of mitigating his request, Jesus accentuates it. With an enigmatic statement, he says, What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? What does he mean? He is saying, If you now have so much difficulty in accepting my proposal, now that I am with you, and you see this proposal that I make to you incarnate in me, what will happen? when I have returned to the Father. Then it will be even more challenging to adhere to my request to donate your life. This difficulty is present in the community of Rome when Peter writes to the scattered brethren in Pontus, Galatia, Bithynia, Cappadocia, who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ. It is found at the beginning of the first letter of Peter. It says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What the disciples are going through in Capernaum is a moment of crisis. It is what we are living today. Crisis does not necessarily mean a negative moment. The word crisis comes from akrinei, which means to discern. It's a moment when you are called to make a conscious choice after understanding well what it implies. From moments of crisis, you can emerge defeated or more mature. From where can we draw the light and the strength to make the right choice in the moment of crisis? Jesus says it in Capernaum. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh helps nothing. In these choices, the flesh indicates human nature. The person with his intelligence, with all his capacity of discernment, to make a good evaluation, the flesh does not suggest the right choice. It is the Spirit that must do it. Whoever wants to understand the evangelical proposal must have his heart open to the voice of the Son of God who is within them. The voice of the flesh, that is our intuitive impulses, lead us in the opposite direction. Therefore, it should not be surprising that the gospel is not accepted by those who insist on wanting to bring in into an agreement with human common sense. No. Jesus continues, The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. He was referring to the one who was about to betray him. And at this point, this enigmatic figure of Judas comes in, who in John's Gospel becomes the symbol of the anti-disciple, the one who betrays the master, the one who does not accept his proposal, the one who wants to follow his dreams, the one who does not accept the bread of life that Jesus offers him, condemns him to ruin as a person, commits suicide as a person. He can have a life of success and glory in this world, but as a person, he destroys himself. In reality, Jesus is not speaking of the historical Judas, but of the Judas that is present in every disciple. Not to listen to what the gospel suggests to you and to follow what your instincts suggest to you, to make choices different from what Jesus proposes to you. And now, 
we are curious to know how these undecided disciples of Kapernau came out of this crisis that in fact reflect what we are experiencing today. Let us listen. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom should we go? You have the word of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you you are the Holy One of God. The conclusion was not long in coming. Many, after having understood, no longer follow Jesus and withdraw. The conclusion is bitter but foreseeable. It is also what happens today in our communities. These disciples who are la- leaving are not bad people. They are not traitors. They are coherent people who have realized that the master demands too much of them and they don't feel like giving him their consent and they withdraw. Jesus respects freedom because faith does not come from a reasoning of the flesh. It is an adhesion that comes from being in love with Christ. You cannot force people to fall in love. Jesus does not force people to share his choice. He does not force people to eat his flesh. And these people who are gone, then as now, maybe they will rethink it later. If the brothers and sisters who have remained are true disciples who live a clear testimony of adherence to the gospel, the ones who have left will be stimulated to revise their choice precisely by a coherent life of their brothers and sisters who have remained, those who decided to continue to adhere to the Master. Now Jesus looks at the twelve. Not at the group of the many disciples, but the remaining twelve. And says to them, Do you also want to leave? Let us translate well this expression, which could be interpreted as saying, Well, if you want to go, go. No. In Greek, it means, By any chance, do you also want to leave? Jesus does not argue. There is nothing more to clarify. The dialogue has taken place. And there is only a yes or no answer. The time of courtship is over. So either you marry or you leave. Jesus provokes the twelve not to push them to leave, but to make them aware of the choice that the true disciple must make. On behalf of all, Simon Peter responds and adheres to Jesus' proposal. Peter loves Jesus and his words, even though he has not yet fully understood them. Exactly as it happens with us. We have felt the hardness of his invitation. We do not know all. We have not yet understood all, like Peter, but we are in love with him. We trust in him. We give him our adhesion. These disciples of Capernaum, just like us, are not perfect, have not understood everything, but they celebrate the Eucharist by giving their adhesion to Jesus, even though they still have many questions and many doubts. Peter says, we have believed, we have trusted in you, and we continue to trust in you. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. 
Holy One means something different from what we imagine. It begins in their minds, in their hearts, and the adherence to the true face of God which they have begun to grasp in their Master. I wish you all a good Sunday and a good week. Thank you.